Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless been a couple of big months for ufos first they showed up in vegas there's like an eight foot person beside it and another one's inside and it has big eyes and looking at us and it's still there okay where is this on your property uh, uh in my backyard I swear to God, this is not a joke. This is actually we so just two, terrified of it. So there's two people or two subjects that are in your backyard? Correct, and they're very large. They're okay. like eight foot. Nine feet, ten foot, I don't know. They're, they, look like, they look like aliens to us. Big eyes, they have big eyes. Okay. Like, like, I can't explain it. And big eye mouth. They're shiny eyes and... And they're not human. They're 100% they're not human. And then we had a Pentagon whistleblower telling us the government's been sitting on a treasure trove of alien tech. When you say crash retrieval, what do you mean? Uh, these are retrieving non-human origin uh, technical vehicles. You know, call it spacecraft, if you will. Uh, it's probably not the right parlance, but uh, no kidding, non-human, exotic origin vehicles that have either landed or crashed. If you're telling us the truth, mm -hmm. everyone... The entire American public has been lied to for decades. Yeah, there's a sophisticated uh, disinformation campaign targeting the U.S. populace. Normally, when evidence is fantastic and unbelievable as aliens and UFOs, the government's first in line to shut it all down and call you crazy. But that's not happening anymore. We have sitting members of Congress telling us that they have compelling evidence of UFOs. This is Congressman Tim Burkett. If they have this kind of technology, then, I mean, I've said this before, they could turn us into a charcoal briquette. If they can travel light years or at the speeds that we've seen and the um, and defy physics as we know it, fly underwater, um, don't show a heat trail, things like that, then we are, um, uh, we are vastly... Um, you know, nice. we're out of our we're out of our league. We couldn't handle it. We we couldn't we couldn't fight them off what we wanted to. Tennessee Congressman who sits on the House Oversight Committee, Tim Burchett, joins me now. So, Tim, do you know that the government has this crazy alien stuff and is keeping it from us? Well, I don't know about that Vegas deal, but the uh, uh, the whistleblower, I know him. You know, he's a he's a decorated veteran. I know in Washington D.C. that doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot, but um, but in 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 uh, East Tennessee, that means a whole lot. Those are the Tic Tac videos you're seeing there right now. Those are videos that were taken um, by um, American military. That's their their gunners, um, their 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 gunner photography. They are actually trying to follow those things, and and those are some of the best pilots in the world. So either they're lying, or somebody else is lying. And so I, I tend to go with our military men and women. I. I've been briefed on things, some things I can speak about and some things I can't. Well, what kind of you things know, the, the can federal... you talk about? You said you can't talk about stuff. Well, I, yeah, I can talk about this. some of these, these crap that you're watching right there. They have no heat trail. They defy every bit of physics that we know about. They, they, <clears throat> they can fly underwater or swim underwater, I guess, and they um, basically have no friction. And there is no heat trail, so you don't know, we don't have any idea what, what's propelling them. And everybody says at first, well, that's the Russians. And you know good and well that Putin had a, uh, had a UFO. He'd land the thing on the, on the White House lawn, probably get out, ride a unicorn bare-chested over to the president and punch him in the mouth and then ride back to Mother Russia. If the Chinese had it, they'd own us. I mean, in all seriousness. So we're, you're left with one other conclusion. These things are coming from somewhere else. And this has been covered up since 1947 or sooner. You know, we have military personnel that are decorated veterans telling us they've seen these things. And, you know, we just need to get to the bottom of it. I've, I've added an amendment to the National Defense Authorization Act to declassify all things about UFOs and UAPs. Because if they don't exist, then why are they hiding them? And if they do exist, why don't we know about it? Tell me a little bit about how you know that the UFOs fly <laughs> underwater. 
Well, you just saw a video that just showed that right there. There was one that that just trailed, and you can listen to the um, to the uh, the pilots if you. It's called the Tic Tac videos, like the, like the candy, and you can Google it. And it's been on 60 Minutes, and they literally go underwater, and they um, and they fly out without at the same speed. And these have been documented. And, and the trouble you've got is these pilots are afraid to come forward, even with whistleblower protection, because what happens, and I've talked to these pilots, they've been interrogated for over eight hours, some of them, and then they're, they're told not to say anything. And of course, it ends up on their record. So we've, I've actually t spoken with pilots who said, look, I've destroyed this evidence because I don't want to have to come back and explain it to my uh, superiors and then be subjected to ridicule. Yet it happens time and time again. And I've been told by some higher ups, Burchett, we got more important things to deal with than this. And I said, well, what's more important than, than American fighting men and women in, in $50 million aircraft? We've had 13 certified, certified, I won't say close encounters because that's the movie, but they've had almost near collisions in the air. And, they, and, these are, and this is public record. And yet when we have a hearing, the Pentagon puts a couple of people in charge of it. Honestly, they couldn't spell UFO. You tell me, what the heck is going on? Why are they covering this up? I think the, I think the world needs to know. I did too. Let's get to the bottom of Let's it. Let's do Quit it. Hiding it out. Quit hiding it. And, and, and the worst thing about it is the Pentagon's going to come to us and say, and that's what they're doing now, watch. They're going to say, oh, we need to study this. Send us a few billion dollars. Well, hell no, they don't need to study it. All they need to do is turn loose the files. It's a familiar UFO story. <laughs> but this time with a very different twist. Congress is listening closely to otherworldly claims about the U.S. having recovered alien craft. When you recover something that's either landed or crashed, um, sometimes you encounter um, dead pilots. And uh, believe it or not, as, fan as fantastical as that sounds, it's true. That's former high-ranking intelligence officer David Grush telling News Nation he is blowing the whistle on a government cover-up going back over a half a century, but admitting he has not seen any craft or bodies. But all the UFO hype, enough to prompt Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer to propose new legislation that would set a 300-day deadline for agencies to find any records and turn them over to a review board that could declassify them. Either they're telling the truth, and that is something that obviously would be uh, the, the biggest story in human history, or we have people in really important positions of government who are crazy. Now, the Pentagon has denied those claims that you heard, and Grush has denied our request to interview him, saying he won't talk until after he testifies in front of Congress. That could happen within the month. All of this, a very bizarre story, but one that seems to be headed to Capitol Hill. Could an alien deception be the strong delusion God sends on an unbelieving and unrepentant world in the last days? Recently, interest has been rising in the theory that an alien deception will be part of the end times. Odd as it may seem, this theory is entirely plausible from a Christian perspective. Although the Bible gives us no word about whether or not aliens exist, there is no inclusion of them in the creation account in Genesis, and no mention of them elsewhere. The Bible does tell us about visitors from another world, the spiritual world, as we read in Ephesians 6.12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness, in the heavenly places. According to a National Geographic survey, 77% of all Americans believe there are signs that aliens have visited Earth. According to a recent Harris poll, only 68% of all Americans believe that Jesus is God or the Son of God. That means that the number of Americans that believe that UFOs have visited us is now greater than the number of Americans that believe what the Bible has to say about Jesus Christ. With each passing year, the frequency of UFO sightings seems to keep increasing, as does the number of movies, television shows, and video games featuring aliens and extraterrestrial life. It is almost as if the population of the planet is being primed for something. Could this phenomenon be the strong delusion of the last days that is talked about in the Bible? 2 Thessalonians 2 9-12 The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure and unrighteousness. Why is God sending a strong delusion? The Bible makes it clear. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Simply put, God sends a strong delusion to those who choose not to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. The prophet Isaiah puts it succinctly. 
just as they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delights in their abominations, so will I choose their delusions, and bring their fears on them. Because when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, they did not hear, but they did evil before my eyes, and chose that in which I do not delight. The rapture is a familiar concept to most Christians and non-Christians alike. While they may not believe it, and they may even laugh at it, many non-Christians know that all the Christians believe that they are supposed to somehow disappear before the end of the world. Satan would seem to have a problem. How would he be able to explain away the fact that every person who was a Christian has suddenly disappeared? It would seem like a huge wake-up call to the world that the Christians were right after all. It is becoming more and more clear what Satan's solution to this dilemma is. He will answer this preposterous idea, the rapture, with another preposterous idea, an alien deception. When thinking of the peculiar things of the world, the New Age movement tends to come to mind. Psychics, mantras, astrology, and crystals are some of the symbols of this diverse group of the extremely spiritually deceived. Another topic that has always interested New Agers has been UFOs and extraterrestrials. In the past, the idea that UFOs were real was relegated to the fringe. In recent years, however, several scientists have come to the conclusion that extraterrestrials are statistically probable. One of the leading astrophysicists, Stephen Hawking, states that aliens are real and possibly dangerous. Christians must deal with this from a biblical worldview and not be caught up in the deception that UFOs are anything but agents of the prince of the power of the air, aka Satan. God is very real, angels are very real, and the enemy is also very real. In an article by a former New Age participant, Jim Sales describes a prevailing belief among New Agers. Sales describes what Israeli psychic Yuri Geller said, extraterrestrials would not interfere until, in a single night, at the peak of the conflict, they would remove millions of humans who resist this initiation into a higher spiritual consciousness and re-educate them before returning them to Earth a few years later. Another article quotes Barbara Marciniak in her book Bringers of the Dawn as saying, The people who leave the planet during the time of Earth changes do not fit in here any longer, and they are stopping the harmony of the Earth. When the time comes that perhaps 20 million people leave the planet at one time, there will be a tremendous shift in consciousness for those who are remaining. Geller and Marciniak's quotes sound quite familiar to Christians. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16-18 tells Christians they will disappear from the earth someday. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. The source of this information in both cases, Yuri Geller and Barbara Masiniak, is described as being from psychic contact with extraterrestrials. This is not something New Agers have invented. It comes straight from the mind of Satan, disguised as an alien. This has been communicated to them, and will possibly be the explanation for the rapture of the church, i.e., those who do not fit into the earth anymore, those who resist the initiation into a higher spiritual consciousness, the troublemakers. Are you a troublemaker? I hope so. The signs of Jesus soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. 
believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.